in this video, I'm going to talk about another uh, deep learning approach, which is the recurrent neural networks. Recurrent neural networks, or in short RNN, are the state-of-the-art algorithms for sequential data that are used, uh, for example, by Apple series or Google's voice search. And it is the first algorithm that actually can remember its input due to an internal memory, which makes it perfectly suited for machine learning problems that involve sequential data. It is one of the algorithms behind the scenes of amazing achievements seen in deep learning over the past few years. Uh, I'm going to cover some basic concepts of how neural network, uh, recurrent neural network works, and what are the biggest issues and how to overcome them. Uh, recurrent neural networks are a powerful and robust type of neural networks and belong to the most promising algorithms in use because it is the only one with an internal memory. Like many other deep learning algorithms, they are actually re relatively old, uh, initially created in 1980s, but only recently they have seen their true potential, and that is, like many other machine learning algorithms, due to the increase in computational power along with a massive amount of data. And uh, one form of neural network uh, RNNs that are uh, quite useful and pop popular are long short-term memories, and we're going to see about them here uh, in this uh, video. And because of their internal uh, memories, RNNs can remember important things about the input they received, which allow them to be very precise in predicting what is coming next. And uh, that is why their preferred algorithms for sequential data is like, I don't know, time series, speech, text, financial data, audio, video, weather, many different things. So uh, I think it is fairly obvious, but yet again, I'm going to answer these questions. Uh, uh, why do we need to uh, use uh, an an, an, an and when do we need to use an RNN? And uh, according to Lex Friedman from MIT, whenever there is a sequence of data and that, tempo, uh, and that temporal dynamics that connects the data is more important than the spatial content of individual frames. So basically when the time is important for us, uh, recurrent neural networks are the way to go and um, you can see them behind many things. You can uh, see them behind Siri. You can uh, see them behind, uh, I don't know, Google Translate. Uh, you can see them when applications are uh, built based on the electronic health record. Uh, I don't know, so many different things. Uh, so uh, the question next that we would like to answer is that how recurrent neural networks actually work. And to understand RNNs properly, you uh, need to know the normal feed for one neural network uh, working, and I'm pretty sure that you already know it by now, uh, and sequential data. Sequential data is basically just ordered data in which related things follow one and each other. And examples are financial data or DNA sequences, for example. And the most popular type of sequential data is perhaps time series data, which is the series of data points that are listed in time order. Uh, and uh, this is another example. It is like for uh, predicting the word that comes next. Uh, a usual RNN has a short-term memory, and uh, there's also uh, with combination with the LSTM that have a long-term memory, and we see that later. This is another good illustration of uh, neural networks memory. Basically, uh, this is uh, input first, the man is walking, and then the next word is predicted, and every stage that we go forward, the next word is predicted until a complete sentence is predicted. The man is walking down the street. And it, it sounds like magic, but we are going to see how this works. 
just to simply put it, recurrent neural networks are the immediate past to the present. This is the immediate past and this is our present here. Uh, RNNs and feed-forward neural networks uh, get their names from the way they channel information. In a feed-forward neural network, the information only moves in one direction, as you can see it here. From the input layer, through the hidden layer, uh, to the output layer. And the information moves straight through the network and never touches a node twice. Uh, that is why feed-forward neural network has no memory of the input they received and are bad at predicting what's coming next. Because a feed-forward network only considers the current input, it has no notion of order in time, and it simply can't remember anything about what happened in the past except its training. Uh, the story in an RNN is different. In an RNN, the information cycles through a loop when it makes a decision, it considers the current input and also what it has learned from the input it received previously. Therefore, an RNN has two input, the present and the recent path. And, and this is important, the recent path, when we are talking about normal RNNs. Uh, and uh, this is important because the sequence of data contains crucial information about what is coming next which is why an RNN can do things that the other algorithm could not do. Uh, Feed-forward neural Uh, Feed-forward neural network assigns, like all other learning, uh, deep learning algorithms, a weight matrix to its inputs and then reproduces the output. Note that RNNs apply its weight to the current and also to the previous input. Furthermore, a recurrent neural network will also tweak the weights for both through uh, gradient descent and backpropagation through time. And also note that while feed-forward neural networks map one input into one output, RNNs can map many to, uh, to many, many to one, one to many, and one to one. Many to many could be like translation, and many to one could be, for example, classifying a voice. So what is this prop, uh, backpropagation through time that we are, in, we are talking about? Uh, to understand the concept of backpropagation through time, you will need to understand the concept of forward and backpropagation uh, first. And we already talked about it in the previous lecture, but uh, I, I just uh, briefly say it again because it is important for the concept of neural, recurrent neural networks. And in neural networks, as you saw before, we basically do uh, forward propagation to get the output of the model and check if this output is correct or, uh, or incorrect to get the error. And then back propagation is basically nothing but just going backward through the network to find the partial derivatives of the errors with respect to the weight. And by that, we can subtract uh, these values from the weight. I mean, I, you have seen this before. So backpropagation basically tries to tweak the weights of your model while training. And the image you see here illustrates the concept of forward uh, propagation uh, and a back backpropagation in a, a feed-forward neural network. And this is what we have seen here. Uh, the, uh, the only thing we are talking about differently is the backpropagation through time. And uh, this is basically doing the same backpropagation for an unrolled uh, recurrent neural networks. Uh, this is what you, are see, you see here. This is an unrolled neural network. Unrolling is a visualization and conceptual tool that helps you understand what is going on within the network. Most of the time, while implementing a recurrent neural network in the, I don't know, Python, Backpropagation is automatically taken care of, so you don't need to do anything about that, but you need to know how it works and uh, potentially troubleshoot the problems that happens. Uh, 
Uh, okay, as I said, this is an unrolled RNN, and on the left, this is the original RNN that unenrolled uh, after the call uh, sign. Basically, this is the Uh, there is no cycle after when uh, we kind of show it uh, how it is after the equal sign uh, since the different types of steps are visualized here and the information is passed from one st time step to the other one uh, the illustration also shows why an RNN can be seen as a sequence of neural networks uh, if you do backpropagation through time the conceptualization of unrolling is required since the error of a given time step depends basically on the previous time step uh, within uh, backpropagation uh, through time, then the error is backpropagated from the last to the first time step. So it is more or less the same thing that you saw before, just uh, again, once more time plays a role here. So these are the good things about uh, recurrent neural network, but what are the problems? There are two major obstacles that uh, RNNs have to deal with them. Uh, so the first one is, uh, uh, gradient exploding and uh, basically exploding uh, gradients are when the algorithm without much reason assigns a stupidly high importance to the weights and uh, we can solve this problem by truncating or squashing the gradients another problem is vanishing gra gradients and vanishing gradients occur when the values of a gradient are too small and the model learns uh, stops learning or take oh, too much time uh, as a result and this is a major problem and much harder to solve but uh, the good thing is that using LSTM we solve this problem as well. So what are long short term memory models or LSTMs? LSTMs are an extension for the recurrent neural networks which basically extends the memory. Therefore it is well suited to learn from important experience that have a very long time lags in between. So it it, now we are moving from just immediate past to a much longer past. The units of an LSTM are used as building units for the layers of an RN, often called an LSTM network. LSTM basically uh, enables RNNs to re remember inputs over a long period of time. This is because LSTM contains information in a memory, uh, very much like the memories that we have in computer. The LSTM can read, write, and delete the information from its memory. Uh, we can see the memory as a gated cell with uh, gated meaning the cell decides whether or not to store or delete information if it opens the gate or not basically based on the importance in assigned to the information the assigning of uh, importance happens through weights which are also learned by the algorithm it simply means that the uh, network learns over time what information is important and what is not. In an LSTM, you have three different gates, input, forget, output. These gates determine whether or not to let new input, input gate, delete the information because it isn't important, forget gate or let it impact the output at the, at the current timestamp, that is the output gate. And here is what you see, the illustration of the three gates. Uh, the gates in an LSTM are analog in the form of sigmoids, meaning that they range from 0 to 1. The fact that they are analog enables them to do the backpropagation. Uh, the problematic issues of vanishing gradient then is solved through LSTM because it keeps the gradient steep enough which keeps the training relatively short and with the high accuracy. So now we need we know a bit of theory about recurrent neural networks and long short term memory networks. Let's see if we can build a small model with them.
see you in the next video.